Good morning, everybody. Mm. Yes, I do always have coffee in my hand, and yes, I do record these in the morning. Uh, okay, so um, last week, earlier in the week, uh, we built a sandwich as an illustration of uh, talking about balancing everything out and to get a little bit of a, a more robust uh, program built or uh, products built or applications built into uh, your lawns. And I had a lot of questions this week. And, and really the point of that video was um, twofold. Number one, talking about reducing in rates. That's the first. And then two, about making sure that you have everything built into a program uh, in order to support those reduced in rates. Now, one thing that's happened a lot is there, there are people who are trying to get reductions down in inputs, uh, particularly on nitrogen, um, and maybe doing it a little bit of a different way by um, having products that last longer, say they are uh, slower release or, or they're combined with different things to, to allow for a longer feeding. Um, so if you take, for example, um, any bag of fertilizer, any bottle of fertilizer that's on the shelf, anything that would be considered sort of a traditional lawn care uh, product, but let's let's just focus on bags because math is easy. And you look at an analysis, every bit of math is going to be designed to get you this uh, three quarters to one pound of N based on label spec uh, when you do an application. And And what's sort of funny about that is you have these uh, mixes for different times of year that say, well, you know, this is for spring and this is for, uh, you know, summer and this is this and, and that's that. Well, when you end up doing the math on the application rate, the nitrogen level pretty much stays consistent, whether it's spring or it's fall or it's summer, um, unless you're switching into products that are amendment based. So, that's something to really pay attention to, uh, you know, just because in the springtime you're putting down something that's 40% nitrogen and in the summer it's 12, you ultimately end up putting the exact same amount of N out because the app rate of that 40% something is 200 pounds an acre versus, you know, this 10 or 12, which could be four to 600 pounds per acre, right? So, you know, always check your math on that. So when I talk about low nitrogen inputs and, and what um, when I initially started and, and how everything developed, my programs are running at maximum a half a pound of nitrogen a thousand and usually that's only in the spring and fall and that's going to be based uh, solely on what's happening from an environmental standpoint. So I take a few other things into effect. If I'm running a long, cool spring, for instance, um, in, in an area. So, so one, one of the things that I do professionally is I work with uh, my customers, spray customers um, out there uh, who, who have businesses and, and kind of design programs tailored to what's happening environmentally. And we run through uh, sometimes every month, uh, we'll do a quick rehash of what the, what the weather's been like, how has the rainfall, is it dry, is it, you know, whatever, um, above average temp, below average temp, uh, what are you seeing on lawns as far as is there disease pressure? We do like a quick, like a 10 question thing and then set up what their uh, next applications are going to be. So we get that benefit professionally to be able to uh, adapt on the fly with the materials uh, and, and the sort of arsenal that we have at uh, BioGreen and Green County FERT to, to really custom tailor into a professional lawn care program. So. Again, going back to these reduced in rates, most of the companies that I deal with who are running a, well, most of the companies I deal with, if they're running 100% on our program, uh, no granular products or anything like that, we have most of them down to between, if you average it out, say on a six application base, they're doing a quarter pound of in every time. Pound and a half to two pounds maximum and oftentimes when I bring a company on board who's been on a traditional program of three and a half, four, five, six pounds of in per year, their initial year, we will sort of step them down and say, you know, we're going to run at about 2.4 to 2.6 
pounds of N for the course of the year, which is equal to about a half a pound of N every time, okay? So over time, okay, and this is the beauty of the soil cycle and building up, uh, you know, deeper root systems and, and having the grass not do surge growths and, and allowing the, the clippings to mulch back in and keeping everything in place, okay? We're keeping everything in place really building the soil structure, really encouraging the soil life to be there. Um, no need to put out worm castings if you've got earthworms, okay? Anytime you're dealing with a, a robust soil system, the inputs become less and less and less, okay? So one of the things, if you go back in history, uh, that was exciting, that sort of changed the shape of fertility was the, uh, the post-World War applications of ammonium nitrate. And so fertilizer and sort of, I'm not going to call it manufactured fertilizer, but fertilizer in general had, had come from a multitude of different sources. Um, you know, through the 14, 15, 1600s for crops, um, you know, using things like uh, saltpeter, potassium nitrate, um, and, you know, bones and uh, different sort of animal wastes and manure and everything. So it's, it's always been cultivated. And you can go further back um, to, I want to say, 340 to somewhere AD, Cato the Elder. You guys can look it up. Cato the Elder um, wrote a book about agriculture and how to do all of these techniques that are still fairly well followed today. Uh, it was the first sort of written book on, on agriculture and yeah, forgive me, I haven't looked it back up in quite some time. I found that fascinating, you know, 15, 20 years ago when I was trying to learn about a lot of these things. And we, we have the ability to create in a, a lawn care system or, or on our lawns a very self-sustaining uh, nutrient cycle program, like very easily, because we're keeping grass clippings in place. Uh, the nutrients are staying through. We're getting, obviously, some carbon exhaust comes off of that. Uh, more goes down to the soil. So let's kind of step through how that goes. Now, if we can just slow down the initial spring surge growth. Okay, so this is how I'm going to take you through a program. It's like, say something on mine. If we came out with the 1801 at a rate of about 15, 16 ounces per thousand and sprayed that down, you get a nice spring green up just like you would expect. Uh, grass begins to grow. And obviously, in the springtime, it always grows faster than in the summertime. So we could start there and then we could immediately put our RGS right on top of it and that's going to help drive those roots down a little bit more. And so now let's say we move into late spring, depending on temperature, if it's starting to get hot or if it's cold, maybe we're gonna do another one of those 1801 shots. But now at this point, I might wanna throw the Air 8 product out there because I wanna start breaking down through what's been built up over the springtime. Next application, you're gonna to wanna to get some of the dethatch in there because we wanna take Anything that's been left over that's starting to mat at all, any thatch layers, any uh, non-composted materials that are in the grass, it could potentially suffocate it coming into the heat. Okay, so I really want you to hear what I just said there. Thatch will suffocate soil. Okay, most of your those fungus type diseases are going to come from a lack of oxygen in certain areas. Now in other places, transition zones and, and where bram patches is, is prevalent, and maybe a little different. This is a bit of a, um, just a, a disease of the turf that happens because of the area that you're in, okay? Um, we absolutely have seen that reduced, uh, by the way, by using some of these at, at certain times to help to push the grass through that. Um, or even sort of dry out the fungus. And, and it had a lot of success with that with both the uh, RGS and the aerate treating immediately on top of actively growing fungus. So we'll sort of continue on. Now at this point, if you've only done two applications of 1801 at 15 ounces, we're only at a half a pound of N. You can run that program four, five, six times easily. Okay, so if we go to six times, now you've only put out a pound and a half and we've trickled along with these other things right through the season. And the beauty of going with like a, a liquid and, and feeding that way is you get a foliar uptake. So you see a result very quickly. And then you get this benefit because it's a carbon, a lot of carbon, this is going to push down into the ground. And then you have a different level of N that's in here that we have in the products 
that are going to start feeding the opposite direction. So you get this sort of two-term feeding out of the 1801, which makes it a really flexible product. So if we were continuing on into the summer, now we've gotten to that point where we want to get the, our dethatch out. Okay, so you have another option there. There's, again, you can run that 1801 straight through and then throw uh, another application of aerate out. Bang, you're gonna just keep allowing things to flow deeper, get water penetration down deeper, especially when it's hot, and relieve stress on the plant, and then finish out also with your 1801 and RGS. Now, when you really look at a lawn program, the bookends are really important, okay? Um, those spring and fall apps the fall is basically just a prep for the spring push, okay? Applying nitrogen at certain temperatures keeps it pretty stable. And uh, in agriculture with certain uh, levels of nitrogen, um, the products, the nitrogen will be knifed in uh, like at Thanksgiving and putting down when the soil temperatures are cool below 62 degrees because it actually remains more stable. So. The cooler it is when you put that final application of in down, the longer that's going to last and the quicker your grass responds in the springtime. So um, that's sort of a quick run down there. Now along those summertime applications is when you get the opportunity to throw in those other minor elements as well. Okay, you've got the opportunity to throw microgreen in there. You've got the opportunity for iron in there. Now it just depends on how much time you have and you want to spend on a lawn. Now, in the US, and yours is going to be different. I'm gonna get probably 50 comments on people saying, well, mine's not like that. The US average on a lawn right now is like 4,000 square feet, okay? Throughout the South, in the East, there's a lot of quite bigger ones. In the West out here, that's, that's probably fair. Um, so, you know, if you have the time and you wanna get out there and walk your lawn every now and again and spray some things down in the evening or in the early morning, there you go. That's the simplicity. A little hose and a couple bottles on the shelf, and uh, you guys are you guys are good to go. So, I just wanted to run through that real quick, kind of give you a little overview of of uh, how you could run a pretty simple and very beautiful uh, program through the season. And um, go ahead and shoot me some questions, comments. I will be around. We'll talk to y'all real soon.